to the page of our guest tonight. Uh, we do have a special guest in the studio tonight, and her name is Cindy Mail. There she is, Cindy. You are live right now, streaming out. Wave to the crowd. Everybody's seeing you worldwide. I think that's this way, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right there. So how are you? I'm good. Thank you. I'm good. It's nice to be back um, in St. Croix. Okay. Again. So you, you, you're back in St. Croix, and you've been here just maybe a couple of weeks now, maybe, I guess? No, I've actually been here um, at, least, at least a month, because I gave four weeks of classes at the courtyard already mm -hmm. okay okay yeah. so you've been busy i have been busy okay okay um, so let's backtrack a little bit so it's probably maybe a couple years since you were here right and last so last it was it's been about a year and a half i, year came, and half? I came in december okay yeah. so what have, you, what have you been doing between then and now just kind of catch everybody up on you know your your activities and so I, I when i when i say cindy mill i say you know she's a resident yoga instructor you know, spirit, spirituality, uh, enthusiast, uh, just, just a good positive person. So, you know, kind of what, what you've been up to? Well, I think that it, it's, uh, I'd like to just say that it was in 2012 when I went out to visit my parent, my daughter in California. And on the way back, I went to visit my parents and they were just not in a good state of health. Okay. And so I just needed to stay and help them in their transition. And when I did that, um, Hovenza closed down, the schools closed down, I lost my job, I had no job, and so there wasn't really anything for me to come back to. Okay. So I went out to um, Santa Monica, and I took Kundalini Yoga Tucci training. Okay. It took six months, that was, it was a great experience, and all of the things that I felt within me, mm -hmm. it, it really um, told me the reason why okay why the that those feelings were there and and that they were in fact very real okay so it was a very positive thing for me and I started trying to teach it in my community in South Carolina in the Bluffton area in South Carolina well mm. that just did not fly at all oh really why is that well Kundalini yoga is very spiritual okay yoga. It, it the whole purpose of this yoga is to raise your Kundalini or creative energy and get you ready for meditation. Okay. Eh, it's just not happening. Okay, so the, the, the folks South, there didn't South really Carolina. didn't kind of no. didn't gravitate <laughs> to that? Okay. <laughs> so then I decided, well, let me try Savannah. Okay. Savannah's uh, pretty worldly with SCAD being there, and okay. they, they finally opened it up. You know, you've got a um, Gold, Gold Coast. Is it, no, what is it that makes the airplanes? Uh, a, a company? Right. Yeah. It's not Boeing. It's gold. I don't remember. But that company's there. There's okay. some very large So it's new, new to the area? Mm. New to the Savannah area, pretty much? Well, fairly. Okay. You know, n not new, new. But okay. The basic line is, is that Savannah's fi finally, in the Deep South, opening up to business, opening up for people to come in. Okay. It's very closed-minded for a long, long time. Okay. And SCAD did a lot to, to help that. So I'm like, let's try it there. So last... Not this past March, but the year before that, I opened a Cindy Mail Kundalini Cindy Mail Art and Yoga okay. studio there, and rented a little space, and it was working really well. So I bought an 1875 home uh, in Midtown Starland Art District. Okay. And um, I've been fixing it up. And, okay. You know, it's ready to do a yoga Airbnb. Oh, that's, really? Okay. That's my cool. goal. Okay. So that if someone comes and stays there and they have a yoga lifestyle already mm -hmm. and, and it's built in oh. and they don't want to go to a big hotel, um, they can come there. There's a yoga meditation room. It's a vegetarian uh, kitchen. Okay. It's, it's set up for them. Okay. So is this like already open or this is coming? This is coming. Okay. I'm okay. still got a lot of work to do. On okay. It. Yeah. Okay. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Uh, well, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> so you're doing all the work or you coordinating all the work? Or? I'm doing like a lot of sanding, a lot of the caulking and uh, the uh, whatever you call it. So contractor type stuff. Yeah. Okay. But I'm doing it under uh, instruction of a contractor that I've hired. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you know, I'm in the historic district, so you have to follow all the historic district rules. The codes and, and all that stuff. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. But okay. it's it's a sweet little Victorian house, 140 years old. Okay. Okay, so you've been working on that and um, teaching classes. Teaching classes up there. Mm -hmm. And creating art. Okay, and creating things different. <laughs> okay, so talk a little bit about the art that you that you that you that you've been working on. Well, um, when I first started doing art, 
back in the 1970s, mm. um, I started with batik. And it occurred to me at that time that the flow of the wax, I didn't realize that I didn't put the word meditation to it, mm. but I realized that it was very flowy and calming and soothing and, and things would just kind of download in my mind, right? So then I began to realize that art was a form of meditation. And I wrote a thesis in 1982, Art as a Means of Raising Consciousness. Okay. And then I wrote my master's thesis in 2001, Fractal Geometry and Chaos Theory as it Relates to Consciousness. So I've been studying consciousness through my art. Long time. And through yoga mm -hmm. for 40 years. Okay. Right? So finally around 2001, I started doing this series of pieces where I would take my drawings and my sketches and I would put them into the computer and do this whole left brain rational computer kind of thing mm -hmm. um, and create a pattern. Okay. Because I'm also a fabric designer. That's, yes. you know, I do that too. Yes. So I would put them into a pattern, which I then used for clothing, but I also used them as an underpainting oh. for paintings then on top of it. I would get them printed out on canvas, okay. paint on top of them, and then do some kind of work on top of that. Okay. So you'd have the left brain computer stuff, you'd have the right brain painting stuff, and then you'd have this very random, you know, magical wherever it goes kind of thing that meandered all on the top of okay. it. Okay. And um, so that the, the first one gave me the awareness of conscious ground. Okay. Or what they call in Kundalini Yoga, the nod vibration. Okay. Which is the, the smallest most rapid vibration. Okay. Okay. Psi field, it's been called that, but it's conscious ground. Okay. So I, I started in the awareness of that with those pieces. Okay. And then I went on into trying to apply them in various techniques. Um, and then I finally got to the point where I began to actually feel these things within myself. Oh, okay. So that I felt like I was actually getting down to the level where. I was vibrating with those vibrations. Oh, okay. So I did some portraits, you okay. know, my portrait, self-portrait. Okay. And then I wanted to kind of see if there was a collective consciousness. Okay. And if there would be any way through art that I could prove that mm -hmm. there was a collective consciousness. So I went through uh, about a year and a half in Oakland, California, in Hilton Head, in Savannah, here in St. Croix, mm -hmm. of getting probably 100 to 150 people from all segments of wherever the community was. Getting them, try to get them involved? Mm -hmm. okay. And then they would draw, and then I would see what kind of um, feeling it was. Okay. And were they different? Okay. And they were. Okay. You know, like St. Croix is very different from Oakland, California. Oh, okay, I got it's you. It's just different. On that level, it's still even different, in a sense. The things that people draw. Yeah. Like in Savannah, Savannah is a very big music town, mm -hmm. and people in Savannah are very um, proud of their music scene. A lot of people in Savannah drew things about music. Oh, A lot okay. of them. Okay. In Oakland, the artwork was just very bold. Okay. Like people, one person wrote radical honesty on it, you know. Okay. They're, they're, okay. they're just bold. <laughs> yeah. That, that <laughs> sounds pretty bold right there. It's very <laughs> radical honesty. And, and their letters, their pictures, you know, they're big and bold. Mm. And um, what, what happened here? What here? I, yeah. One love. <laughs> That's it? Okay. One love. One a lot love. of one. Just this feeling and the sensitivity of people belonging here. Yeah. One love of yeah. this island of St. Croix. Okay, I got you. It was about place. Okay. You know? Okay, that's interesting. That's a inter pride. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's interesting. That's an interesting... Uh, that everybody collectively felt that way and they sort of interpreted it as one love. You know, that's a famous Bob Marley phrase exactly and it's very common everywhere one love i guess it's just a unity and togetherness and and, with and love. love of this space yeah i mean that's why we're you know yeah you, you could go anywhere right yeah but you're here because you love, love the place. place yeah i got you <laughs> for whatever reason <laughs> that's, an, that's another show <laughs> yeah that is another show so let me let me ask you so you, you you taught before and any any plans on maybe coming back and teaching uh, have you run into any of your like students that you had, and they're they're like, yes. Ismail, please come back." And I have. It's been it's always wonderful to see the students and their parents. Okay. Um, I am. I am coming back, and I am teaching. I'm just not 
Well, that's not true because in February, I have a workshop that I'm doing on pre- Presence Day weekend. Okay. And it's um, Kundalini yoga. Okay. And art, uh, involved around our shadow. Okay. Right. And in Kundalini, the shadow is that part of us which keeps us from expressing our greatest light. Okay. I, I have to just enter, in, anyway, that's, so I am teaching here. Okay. Right? I taught here for four weeks just now. and. Oh, um, but, I mean, not, not in the school environment. No, because I have so much more work that I want to do on the conscious le- consciousness level. Okay. And you can't really do that in, in the school system. Okay. You know? Like, okay, I got you. Here's your curriculum. Okay. And I'm going to be doing this in November, and I'm going to be doing this in October. I got you. It, there's really not a place for okay. consciousness studies there. Okay. I mean, it's hard enough to even get art and music. and In, in the school? Yeah. Yeah, plentiful, yeah. And those are the things that help us to have the experience of consciousness. You know, they say now that we're not in the era, the Piscean era mm-hmm. of knowledge, Right. You remember how Trivial Pursuit was such a big thing? Yes. It was all about how much you know and what you know and can you answer these questions. Yeah. Well, that era has passed. Mm. In the Aquarian age, it's about experience. Oh, okay. Can you or do you have the experience of a larger realm of connectivity Mm. than just your local thought? Okay. So, in other words, we walk around the world and we're thinking about where we're going, what we have to do, what happened to us yesterday, mm-hmm. what what we want to happen in the future. And and so I call that local thought. Okay. Right? A kind of a sensitivity to um, local awareness. And and what we really need to do, and that's what art takes us there. Okay. Music takes us there. Because it causes us to feel okay. beyond ourselves into what I call, um, you know, a global yeah. awareness. So or kind a global of universal, okay. Right. It, it helps us to reach that nod or that that one ground okay. where everything is connected. Okay. Right? We're all connected in that one ground. Okay. So, th- so. this this yoga class that you just took, is this like the highest level of yoga or are there more uh, I guess classes or levels that you can take well kundalini yoga is called a Raj yoga Raj meaning royal okay and it's you know centuries decades thousands of years back yeah yeah as is Hatha yoga okay so there's a lot of yogas today Mm. especially in America that don't have a connectedness to mental and spiritual attitude Mm. And, and a lot of them now are trying to add that on. Oh, okay, right? I got you. I understand. But, but Kundalini Yoga, the whole series of exercises are in a certain order. Okay. And the pranayama, the breath work that you do first. And, and the whole purpose of it is to help you correct your posture, gain strength in your abdominal region, your lower back, your back, lift yourself up mm-hmm. so that you can sit in meditation long enough to have that experience. Oh, okay. Okay. So you want to sit tall, upright. Yeah, you got to have a straight spine because the kundalini is the the energy, and so in a nutshell, when that kundalini, when the time is right, and that kundalini starts to rise up the spine, mm-hmm. and it hits back here at the pineal pineal gland, mm-hmm. and that pineal gland starts to vibrate. And then it, it begins to vibrate the pituitary gland, and the two of them are vibrating together. The pituitary gland, you know, is the master gland. Yeah. And then your whole body just, just yeah. vibrates. Yeah. So you've, you've experienced that? You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And a lot of people have, David. Okay. A lot of people have. Okay. You know, I, it's, I, don't, I don't like to, to give a sense of, oh, yeah, I've experienced that. You know, it's not like that. It's like everybody has the ability to experience that. They either, one, don't know about it, Mm -hmm. or two, they don't really care. Okay. Or three, they just haven't done the work to feel it yet. Okay. In the Bible, they call it a quickening. Yes. Right? Yes. There's a quickening of the body, right? It's your prana, 
which is your pranic energy. Okay. Your chi. Okay. Or ki. Okay. The Yoruba call it ashe. Okay. You know, you've seen on the African masks where the eyes look swollen. Yes. And well, that's ashe. Oh, when the okay. eyes are swollen like that, what the artist is trying to say is that that person is in a state of me- of meditation. Oh, okay. I that understand. state, that person is beyond the manifested worldly plane. I got you. And so next time you see one of these masks, check them out. Yes, I'll have to take a closer look. But I think I know what you're talking about. I yeah. Think I'm talk- okay. Yeah, it's the. It's they're swollen and there's just kind of a slit there. The eyes are So closed. they can sort of see through the slit, but the, the <laughs> around that, I got you. There's a swollen eye. Yeah. And that's the ashe. Okay. And then, of course, the Christians call it the light. Yes. Okay. It's all the same thing. It's all the same thing. I got it's you. It's all the same thing. Okay. And everybody has access to it. It's, it's your birthright. Mm-hmm. Your body was created mm-hmm. so that your mind could stream spirit. Mm-hmm stream that thought vibration kind of outward is it and com- coming in coming in yeah, okay and and bring it into the manifested world because basically humankind is here as a vehicle to manifest good yes that's what we're here for okay but our minds are so cluttered that we we can't see in a global perspective i got you so we don't really know how to interact with one another. Okay. We're not doing a very good job of that. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're falling a little short. Very short. Yeah. And like if you think about Ken Wilber um, was considered the premier philosopher of the second half of the last century. And he wrote Up From Eden, uh, Sex and Society, A Brief History of Everything. Mm. And he coined the term Halon. And a halon is anything that exists autonomously and as well as communally. Okay. And so the whole thing is, if you can't do both of those things, then you can't exist. Oh, okay. Like you look at a molecule or a cell or a tissue, an mm. organ, any of that, mm. right? But in your body, let's say, mm. you have cells in an organ that are not, th- for whatever reason, it might, might be heredity. It might be abuse, mm-hmm. uh, but for whatever reason, th- those cells are, are, are not good. Yes. Right? Yes. And then they, they grow, and then they damage the organ. And then the organ, organ is damaged, and it can't th- thrive. Yeah, it can't function. And so then you can't thrive. Yeah. So the same thing, why should we even think that humankind is any different than a cell within an organ or an organ within the body? We are one within our whole community. I got you. And so if if we're bad, it, then that bad multiplies. And you have, <laughs> you have more bad. And you have more bad, and then the next thing you know, you have a community that's dysfunctional. Yes. And then what happens? That culture or society fails. Fails. I got you. And, you know... So that's yeah, <laughs> it, yeah it's, it's all making sense. It's all making sense. Um, I see, too, that you, ha- you have a couple websites. You have, like, is it four websites? You have the Cindy Mail. I don't know. You, I guess you're the owner of these. I thought that was kind of You have CindyMail.com. You have Cindy uh, Mail Nano Now. Nano Now. Okay, I thought that was kind of interesting. <laughs> and then you have uh, the, the Zenny Zen. Zenny Zen, uh-huh. And then the uh, Illuminated Fabric... Uh, art for candles. Art for candles. Yeah. Yeah. So, th- tell us a little bit. I know that the, the, the Zemi Zen is the uh, is the is the painting on the material. Is that the Zemi Zen is a fashion line. Okay, that's right. It's a fashion line. It's okay. It's a fashion line. Okay. So you're still doing that? Um, I still sell the leggings. Okay. I still I've got a legging <coughs> excuse me pattern on the drawing table now as we speak. Okay. Um, but you know sometimes you just have to put that on hold and go over here for a while. Okay. And then go over here and do something. Right? Okay. I know, it's like, now, why I don't you just do everything in a rational order? You know, do this and finish <laughs> it, then do this and finish it. But that's just not how I work. Just not how it works, mm-hmm. yeah. Because I think when I first met you was at Wim Great House, and that, that was happening at the time there. And that, that was the first one. Oh, really? Okay. That was actually the, um, the Zimmy Zim fashion show that was the result of a grant that I wrote oh, okay. to do a comparative study on Asian culture 
and Taino Caribbean culture. Oh, so that's okay. how it's got the name Zemi. Okay. For the gods and the characters of the Caribbean. Okay. And Zen. Okay. So the Zemis, right? Uh -huh. Heartfelt. Yeah. It's their myths. They tell stories. Yes. And those stories pull your heartstrings. Oh, okay. Right? And Zen, it's mental. Yeah. Right? Zen is mental. Okay. You go into this meditation and the whole thing is right here. Yeah. So Zimmy Zen is about a compassionate heart and an open receptive mind for higher conscious living. Okay. That's what this, the whole website is about. The okay. whole line is about. Okay. Now what about the one here that says Cindy Mail uh, Nano Now? Cindy Mail Nano Now is the work that I'm doing now. Okay. Okay. And I use the, the term nano. Yes. Because nano is a very small measurement. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Like the biologists now and medical people now are working on the nano level. Yeah, the nano level is real tiny, small, magnifying glass. Down inside. And they're, that's the level they're working on. Yeah. Um, and so I'm like, no, not nano tomorrow. <laughs> nano, nano now. now. <laughs> I got you. I got you. No, go there now. Okay. Um, in Kundalini Yoga, they say the vibration that helps you to get rid of the ego is the Shabbat. Okay. S H A B D. Okay. And that's the vibrational level where the ego begins to dissolve and then you become one with everything. Oh, uh, okay. And there was a guy named Martin Buber, uh, and he wrote a book, I and Thou, mm -hmm. which I, I really. Uh, that was one of my early, early okay. books. Early readings, okay. Mm -hmm. Another early reading was uh, Cosmic Consciousness. Oh, and that okay. was by a guy by the name of Maurice Burke. Okay. He was born in 1837. Okay. And he named 33 people at his lifetime mm -hmm. or before who he felt were on a com cosmic conscious level. Okay. And what in their writings or in the things that they did. Okay prove that to him oh okay that's a long time ago yeah 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 real long time yeah. ago uh, <laughs> and then you have the illuminated uh, fabric cart for candles fabric art fabric art yeah you know when you go online to GoDaddy and you're trying to find a name for your website yes <laughs> and they're all taken <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> that was a little long but those are basically um, I have a a patent on the process of uh, thermomolding plexiglass and then uh, putting a poly silk on it. Okay. And then you put a candle behind it and it, um, you know, it sort illuminates. Sort of illuminates and radiates. Okay. But if you're sitting in it and the, the plexiglass design is here and the candle is here, mm. it, it's really um, good for meditation because that candle in the center reflects into the plexiglass and then you have two or three different candles flickering okay i got gotcha. just the one okay so so there's something that you you, you you're selling or i do sell them okay mm -hmm. in okay. fact i sold a lot of them for a while again you know built, redoing this 1875 home i haven't yeah done much of anything but that yes i got you. february but i am planning on um, Continuing on with that? I've got the plexiglass. I'm ready to go with that. Okay. All and right. then the cindymail.com is my older work. It's okay. interior design work. It's fabric installation work. Okay. Tutu Benny's piece when Tutu Benny was here. Yes. A piece that I did in their ceiling. Uh, uh, Savannah Yacht Club pieces. It's more architectural work. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, so you have here what you were sort of talking about a little bit is the, uh, is the Kundalini Yoga and Art for the shadow that's coming up next year so let, let's uh sort of run through that uh, so this is the kundalini yoga and art for the shadow what do you mean for the shadow well the again the shadow is that part of us or those things that we have created because we create ourselves right? okay like, nobody's like you because you've created who you are okay and no matter whether you create good or you create bad you create it and you like yourself okay normally hopefully yes <laughs> so sometimes it's hard to give up things that are holding you back from the light okay and sometimes it's hard to even know what those things are that are keeping you from your pranic force okay keeping you from your light okay right keeping you from being able so the being, to manifest spirit being great as great as you can be. I got you. Or greater than you could be. It's okay. holding you back. Okay. And um, so what we're going to do the first day is to use art and kundalini yoga 
um, to kind of get a, a investigation of what they call the lower triangle or okay. the subconscious, and that's the first three chakras. Okay. And then the second day, we're gonna um, investigate through art and yoga the upper triangle, which is the throat, the anya, and then the crown chakra. Okay. And then we, uh, you know, we'll use various kinds of perceptive ways and association for the lower triangles and then we'll express that through art okay what people have learned okay. about themselves and about one another okay and, okay and the whole process, yeah. okay so this is the uh kundalini yoga and art for the shadow this is in the courtyard at 54 king street christianstead and this is saturday and sunday february 16th and 17th uh 8 30 to 11 uh there is a fee uh to partake, uh, I guess five hours each day for two days. It's two and a half hours each day, five hours total. Okay. There's okay. also going to be a yoga class that Friday that's going to be opened up to the community, and there'll probably be even more than one. Okay. But that Friday class, if someone does pay the hundred twenty dollars and does sign up for the workshop, that yoga class comes in free. Oh, okay. For them as well. Okay. So it's actually three days. It's an hour and a half on Friday, two and a half hours on Saturday, and two and a half hours on Sunday. Okay, I got you. I got you. Um, and so you said uh, bring drawing, color pencils, and um, sketching paper. Right. And this is for the, for the artwork. Right. Uh, and then you also talked to a little bit. So you've been here about a month away, so you've been doing some training. It's, it's not this, obviously. No, it's different from that. Okay. Yeah, what I've been doing the, this last time that I was here is just going through six kundalini basic concepts. Okay. Um, and kind of, you know, I was a teacher for 38 years. Yes. I, kindergarten through college. I taught every single grade level there is. Okay. And, and so, you know, I kind of organized those in a curriculum. Yes. So people could, if they came to all six of them, they had a real nice overview. Oh, okay, I got you. I you got know, you. Some people came to all six and some didn't. So you, you've already done all six already since I you've have. been. Okay. In fact, they asked me to come back. I did a seven. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay, I got you. It's okay. a great honor. It's really nice to be here. Okay. And, you know. So you, 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 they, you know, I guess the the residents, the folks are still very accepting of you and and what you're doing with the yoga and all this other stuff. Yeah. Okay. It's a really nice transition. I feel like. All of the things that I did before and all the teaching that I did before and all the artwork that I did before, in fact, everything I did before, I feel like it led to this. Okay. And after my parents passed away, I'm the matriarch, right? Okay. And I'm like, in the States, I don't really know anybody because <laughs> I haven't been out. Yeah. I've been busy. You've cared. been working, yeah, and yeah. taking care of stuff. and. Yeah. I, w I had a job and then I was helping with my parents and coordinating doctor's appointments and yeah you know all that so you know after they pass away there's a real sense of emptiness yeah it's like whoa yeah you know there's just this drain yeah um like total quiet time eh yeah yeah i don't like that yeah it's too quiet <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, a friend of mine who had taken yoga, kundalini yoga classes from me here in St. Croix, mm -hmm. she emailed me out of the blue and she said, Cindy, she said, they're teaching kundalini yoga up here in Calgary, Canada. Why don't you come up and take the classes? And I'm thinking, that's a fantastic idea. I'd yeah. love to get those certs, you know? Yeah. But not in Canada. <laughs> yeah. It's winter. Yeah, it's winter time. <laughs> so that's when I went to Santa Monica. Is it, okay. My daughter lives in L.A. So. Okay. Okay. It was just about nice and warm. It in LA's great temperature. Great temperature all year round. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that is where Kundalini Yoga first began in America. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yogi Bhajan in nineteen, I think it was sixty nine, sixty eight, sixty nine. Um, he was a customs agent in uh, India, and he would see all these Americans coming in and mm. money had money, and they'd spend all their money and they were looking for higher consciousness and they'd leave not having higher consciousness and having no money yeah. <laughs> so, so after he retired as a customs agent uh, he came through Canada down into LA and in fact two blocks from where my daughter lived was where he started the first uh, his first teaching oh really? Mm -hmm. okay that's yeah. interesting so he's just still, uh, still alive? Or? no okay. no he's not okay, okay. alright good um all right, so our guest tonight is Cindy Mill. Um, anything you wanted to add, sort of, to the equation here? Um, you know, 
I do have a quote here that I would like to to share with our listening yeah. and viewing audience. Sure. I think it's a good one. It's Hafiz, and it's um, David Landensky was the translator, uh, and Hafiz was Rumi's friend. A lot of people know of Rumi, but some don't know of Hafiz. Okay. And um, his quote was, a poet is someone who can pour light into a cup, then raise it to nourish your beautiful, parched, holy mouth. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. Okay. So um, that was from a poem in uh, 60 Wild and Sweet Poems of Haf Hafiz. Okay. And I guess I'm reading it because I feel like that's what we should all be doing for one another. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's the sweet nectar of life that we have in us. You know, offer that up. Yeah. Yeah. But if you don't feel the sweet nectar, you can't offer it you up. You can't offer it up, yeah. No. Okay, our guest tonight is Cindy Mail. And before we go, Cindy, we're gonna we're gonna flip through these pictures here real quick. This artwork is always kind of exciting to look at here. So the first picture uh, we have here is sort of like a house structure, it looks like a neighborhood. If you could sort of envision that. Yep. Uh, what, what's what's the whole concept behind that one? Well, that one's an interesting piece because it began from uh, an interior design piece that I did for a man down on the East Coast near Cardin Beach. Okay. And he came to me one day and he said, Cindy, he said, I'd like for you to paint my refrigerator. And I'm like, tacky. You know, you don't <laughs> want me to paint your refrigerator. You've know, you got this beautiful house on the waterfront down across from Buckeye and you want your refrigerator. No. So I went out and looked at it and it, it had panels on it and you oh. could slide those panels off. Okay. Right? So he also had tiles that were glass tiles so they reflected the light. Okay. So I took about 20 pictures of the three different kinds of glass tiles okay and i put them into a composition one composition would cover the refrigerator and then it has black down the center and then the other composition would cover the uh the, the freezer okay so if you look at the picture do you see that underneath the painting can you see those squares yes of glass tiles underneath the painting yes okay so i finished the computer composition I sent it off and got it printed on canvas and then I started the overpainting and the overpainting is the community at the house that I lived in before I bought the Savannah house okay so you look out the bedroom window and that's what you see that's what you see mm -hmm. right in front of you okay right. and so the whole thing is and the name of that piece is all OEL one okay so the whole community is just full of color and the house is all are like one big house yeah and the you can they're they're diaphanous so that you can see through them to the underneath okay um, okay it's pretty slick and how long did it take you to do that you know i don't know because i never work on just one piece at a time yeah no. it's kind of bouncing around and yeah you got it all in your head and then a week later two weeks later then you got the the final product I yeah, and then after I sat and looked at it for a while, I went back into it, and you'll see I made these kind of gold glitter yeah. um, circles in it. Yes. Because I wanted to soften the rectangles in it. And I also put that glitter in other places so that when you're showing that piece and it's hanging on the wall and you walk by it, mm -hmm. that glitter kind of pops out at you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, perfect. I use metallic thread for that same purpose. And the next picture we have here um, is a young lady sitting down, but I don't think that's you, right? Sitting down, I guess she's uh, painting. She's sitting down and she's painting. Uh, is, that, is that you sitting in the picture? Uh, she's sitting down and she's painting. Or what drawing? Color, what colors are in it? Um, this is like a white, a white background, like waist level coming around in a room. <laughs> 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 you drawing a blank, Cindy? <laughs> Oh, you're blank on that one. All right. Well, um, <laughs> okay, we we'll go up to the next there, one. There is one that I just am beginning. It's not, it's not finished. And okay. And it is a picture it, uh, like that, the All We Are One. Yeah. Was the one when I began to start studying community uh, consciousness. Okay. Right? Before I did the collective work. Okay. Um, so this, I'm working on a piece now, and, and that might be what you're talking about. And there's a girl, and she's in meditation. She has kind of a ball in her hand. 
It's like a ball of energy. And it's a drawing. Oh, okay. That's a ball. Okay. It's just a drawing. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. So. I thought she was sitting there sort of painting. No, she's a, she's a student of mine, a yoga okay. student of mine. Okay. And she's one that I've connected with really well. Okay. Because when I teach, I go around if the class is not too big and I have enough time, and I Reiki. I oh. work Reiki okay. with them to feel the energy and to pass my energy to them and to just expand the auric mm. uh, energy that's there. Okay. Because, you know, like our hearts, the electromagnetic... Uh, energy from our hearts goes out nine feet. Yes. That's why when somebody walks in the room and you're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what you're sort of that's what vibing. You're feeling. Yeah, yeah, you're vibing that. Yeah. So anyway, she, um, that's a piece that I'm working on right now. Uh, okay. And, and, it, and it has to do with doing portraitures of people's spiritual energy. Okay. Okay. And that's my newest work. Okay. So we're gonna roll on here. We have another picture here, uh, art piece of artwork here. It looks like uh, a man and a lady, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm, that's a diptych, um, and that again is on a piece of uh, Cindy Mail computer-aided design artwork that I used. It's very different in that, but um, it, it's I actually have one pair of leggings that are based on that pattern. Okay. Uh, it, it you wouldn't recognize it maybe, but okay. Um, and that has to do with that heart chakra. It's okay. called Anahata. Okay. Because Anahata is the fourth chakra. Okay. And it has to do with that thing we were just talking about. Okay. Like when you're you meet somebody and you, you feel you that you have that energy exchange. Okay. Yeah, that heart okay. energy exchange. All right. So our next picture here looks like a, a picture of a seashell. The seashells. Uh, I think I did about four of them, and those were the first beginnings of my doing over paintings on this underpainting pattern work oh, okay and it was the that was when i became aware of and was trying to understand uh pattern ground okay vibration work okay so those were my first pieces okay and those okay. were about 2001 okay two. and then we have uh this picture uh of uh the inside of the mall and we, when, before oh, yeah. we started, we talked. I wasn't sure what mall it was, but it's actually the mall here in St. Croix, mm -hmm. Sunshine Mall. mall. And you have these pieces kind of hanging. So, kind of explain what you explained to me uh, with with the with the with the artwork and stuff. Well, after I did the shell pieces, and after I did um, the heart and how to dip titch with man and woman, and and a few other pieces. These okay. Are just some representatives, right? And then I did the painting of the houses all the way I won. Okay. And so then I decided that I really wanted to try to put into a manifested form my investigation of um, community consciousness, mm. collective consciousness. Okay. So I started out in Hilton Head, and um, you know what I do is Home Depot donated Tyvek, mm -hmm. a Dick Blick. Every place I went, Home Depot donated the Tyvek. Okay. Here as well. Oh, really? Okay. Um, Dick Blick donated artwork. I mean, the paints and markers oh. and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Everywhere I went. And, um, and then I would take it around to, to like six, at least, places in the community, mm -hmm. and people would draw on it. Okay. Old people, young people. I tried to get as a large of a you know, types of people as I could in the community. Okay. And then I would take a look at it and see if there was a connectedness to that, if there was that string. Mm -hmm. And we talked about that. Yes. So I did it in Hilton Head. I did it in Savannah. Savannah was about music. Here it was about this place. Yeah, the one love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then afterwards I would gather a few people together to help me finish it. And also, because you know, you gotta then try, you gotta put things in between and around it to bring the forms together. Okay. And then I would ask them, you know, how you want these displayed? How do you want to finish this up? Mm. This is my project. This is the yeah. community project. And uh, here in in uh, the the VI in Saint Croix, they wanted to make these big suns. Okay. In Oakland, they wanted to make a kimono. Oh, okay. I got you. So okay. That's what we did with that one. And then our last picture here is, uh, I think you said this was your self-portrait? That's a self-portrait. I did that one last year. Okay. Uh, no, two years ago, I think okay. it was. And it's just me trying to um, put on paper 
what I experience when I'm in meditation. Okay. So those those kind of yellow marks are, are a sense of projection and expansion of myself. Okay. And then there's this light that has to kind of go beyond that darkness that's over there on the kind of left. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that was actually drawn in L.A. Okay. So Los Angeles, it was up in the hills. Okay. So that darkness over there is Los Angeles. Oh, okay. <laughs> that chaos. Yeah. The, the L.A. smog, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, so that, that does it for pictures there. Uh, one question I had for you, too, that <laughs> I thought was kind of interesting. You, you had a picture of, uh, looks like you were on a beach somewhere, and you built sort of a, like, a, like, a, like, a, like a hut or something. Uh, you, you remember that? I think that was on your uh, Facebook page, maybe. Was that here? Oh, yeah. I've put in a lot of um, pictures okay. of my hikes here. And there's two different places. I think what I was saying is, I, th- I remember I was saying that St. Croix was building, rebuilding. Yes. Right? Oh, so that's what you were getting at in that picture. Okay. Yeah. So you remember what I'm talking about? You were sitting on the beach, and it's, you, you got some coconut branches. It looks like a kind of a very man-made that's kind of I, beach hut kind of thing. That's at Isaac's. Isaac's? Um, beach. Up east? Mm-hmm. Okay. I got you. Okay. Because we hiked uh, up Goat Hill, up Sugarloaf. Across the hill, down to Isaac's, and then all and that's around. You, that. And that's where you built that? I didn't build it. it was, it's built. Oh, it was there when you got it's there? there. Oh, it's there. okay, okay, I got you. I and got it's, you. That's great. Okay. And then another one, there's another one. <laughs> okay. And that one is on uh, at Haypenny. Okay. They built that at Haypenny. Okay. All right, perfect, man. See what, see what I'm talking about? People love the place. Yeah. You know, yeah. you don't just I thought it was kind of cool. I said, I wonder if Cindy built that <laughs> with, a, with a hammer and saw and, and drill and whatnot. But Those driftwood pieces are big. Okay. Okay. So someone took the time to put it up so that you can just go down and take a picture there and just kind of continue on in your hike, I guess. Well, you can go in and sit down and relax and get out of the sun. Yeah. You know, open up your sandwich and your lunchbox and eat. Okay. Put a little table. And I'm guessing it's not one person that built it. Built it. Okay. I bet, I bet it's a community... Community effort, Collective right? Spirit. <laughs> the, the one love experience. Yes. All right, all right. So our guest tonight is Cindy Mail. Um, she is Cindy Mail, an art and yoga student yes, studio. studio. And she's been here probably over a month now, and she's been doing some yoga classes. And um, and then in February of next year, she has the Kundalini Yoga and Art for the Shadow event coming up. It's at the uh, Courtyard, which is 54 King Street, Christianstead, Saturday and Sunday, February 16th and 17th, 2019, from 8.30 to 11 a.m. Uh, there's a $120 uh, cost, and it's two days, two and a half, two and a half hours each day. Okay. Plus the one free yoga class. Yeah, plus the one free yoga class, which was going to be on the Friday. Yes. All right. I, I would like to just interject that when I talk about the shadow, um, like Tole, he talks about the ego. Yes. So the ego and the shadow are really one and the same. Okay. Because it's normally your ego that keeps you from doing the right thing. Yeah, I A got you. A lot of times. <laughs> A little man sitting on your shoulder, I guess, right? <laughs> Not always. <laughs> All right, so I guess tonight is Cindy Mill. Cindy, thank you for coming through and spending a little bit of time with us. I know um, you're going to be rolling on here to bigger and better things. Uh, you're a resident yoga, um, what's the word, um, official. Uh, There's a lot of yoga teachers on, on the island. Oh, really? Okay. But I think I'm the only one doing kundalini. Okay. And I also am looking for a place west to do it. In okay. In November and in February. So okay. So if anybody knows of some place west that I could hold a series of classes. Okay. Please contact yeah. David and Yeah, contact me or, or, or uh, hit Cindy up on our, on our on our Facebook page and and hopefully somebody will come through and and help you out with that. Thank you. Cindy, thank you so much for coming through. I uh, just want to say real quick that this is the ATR Perspective Talk Show every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 8 p.m. until. Uh, believe it or not, we do have another show coming in, uh, another show tomorrow night. We actually have our resident fitness person tomorrow night. She's going to come here and talk about being strong and exercises and things to eat and not to eat. Uh, she's been on our show a couple of times in the past, too, so we're, we're looking forward to that as well. On that note, we're out. Everybody have a great evening, and we'll see you tomorrow evening. Peace.